gonna love this audio. It might be a little difficult to understand unless you hear it clearly a few times. So please listen to this guy's question and answer. I hope that it, it'll bring a little bit of clarity within you. Using headphones and earphones will maximize your pleasure. Wishing you an awesome day. Enjoy and chill. Thank you. I'm wondering how to take inspired ideas and not turn them into intense effort. Perfect question. You wait till the next inspiration and the next inspiration and the next inspiration. You only follow the inspired inspiration. You I'm already impatient. Like listening to this, I'm already impatient. I want to jump into action, which well, ultimately is going to lead to um, some type of discomfort. Well, see, as Esther received that impulse to play with her music, the impulse was there until she found what she was looking for, even though she didn't know. You see, Esther didn't know she was looking for rap music because she didn't know she was looking for a rapper. So that part of it hadn't unfolded. So once she found what she was looking for, then her interest just sort of waned away. In other words, that was enough of that. Oh, well, that was fun. And off she went into other things. She didn't put it together until the next day when she met the rapper, what that had all been about. And then she went, oh, I get it. That's why that impulse was so strong. So the first order of business is you have to accept that you're going to receive inspiration and be willing to follow it. And right now you're not. Right now you really have a strong belief that it's hard work and action that makes things happen. And we're not trying to talk you out of action because action is a big part of how things come together. It took action for you to get here. Action matters, but inspired action is so life-giving while the action of struggle is life-taking. This receiving mode that we're talking about, it's not just receiving impulses and ideas and good timing. It's also the replenishing mode. It's where you get refueled and reinvigorated and re-excited and reignited and restored and renewed, you say. So. so I've learned that. That's true. That's exactly what's happening. You know that. You can feel the difference when you wake up in the morning excited about what you're going to do and when you wake up in the morning sort of dreading what you're going to do. You can feel what comes with alignment and what comes with not alignment. This also goes back to... Most people... We want to hear you, but we want to stick this in first. Most people offer the majority of their action compensating for energy that they messed up. They didn't get in alignment, they didn't get in sync, and then they're offering action to try to make up for it. It's like vacuuming your house without plugging the vacuum in. Mm -hmm. Going through all the motions. Did you vacuum the living room? Yes, I did. Every square inch of it. How come it looks terrible? I don't know. I did it. I didn't miss one spot. That vacuum cleaner was on every spot of this entire place. So when I look at myself, I, I see these uh, like personality tendencies or traits that are there, and they, I don't know where they came from. Doesn't you know. matter. Yeah. So when you look at them, start right where you are. What do you prefer from where you are? What's this experience causing you to ask for? The only thing that I've been able to discover at this point is Spe that... We're asking specific to that question. What you just said. So what does that contrast in acknowledgement, what does it cause you to ask for? What clarity did you just throw in the vortex, maybe without even knowing you did? What did you throw in there? I want to be more aware of my guidance. I want my guidance to be more obvious to me. I want to follow that guidance and I want payoffs. I want big payoffs. I want my guidance to pay off so that I know it. Because I want to understand how this stuff works. Because that's what the question is. I want to know how this works. Because you just said, what I got going on isn't working out that well. I'm working too hard. And if I'm not working hard, even when I am working hard, I'm frustrated that my action isn't getting the job done. And we say that's because the vacuum cleaner isn't plugged in. You got to tune in to this energy that creates worlds and then flow it toward things that matter to you. So what are you working so hard on? Take this conversation and apply it to something specific, and let's talk about Okay, that. I have my job, what I do for a living, and then I have a remodeling project that I've been working on, and I had to, I've done most of the work myself, and I decided at this point to just let it go. As soon as I decided to let it go, 
a physical ailment that had been bugging. See, what happens is, it really is all right, because everybody sort of does this too. We ask you to just let us know how we can help. Give us a question, we'll give you an answer. But instead, you felt it important, and a lot of people do, to explain the whole scenario and justify why you haven't been able to do it better on your own. Sort of like, I'm not sure I should be asking this, and I've been trying so hard, and I have this thing that I want so much, and I've been working on it, and finally I've just decided to let it go. None of that is what we ask you. I want to know how to let go so that I can receive more help from the world around me without cutting that off. We don't want you to let go of everything because you got to go to work and you might want to finish that project and there's people in your life and then you have commitments and responsibilities and things and we don't want you to just let go of everything. That would be unpleasant. We want you to set aside 15 or 20 minutes early in the day where you can let go of thought. Just for that little bit of time, just let go of thought because... You've been scrambling around and you've put a whole lot of questions that have a whole lot of solutions that are ripe and ready for you to receive, but you're hammering so hard on the questions that you can't let the answers in. So we just want you to let go long enough that you can feel like you want to play with your music system. So you can just let one impulse in, that's all. We don't want all the answers to all your questions to come at once. You'd want to kill yourself. If everything that you've been asking for, all of a sudden the universe said, he's ready, dump it. <laughs> you couldn't even function in that kind of an information download. You'd go hide under your bed and you wouldn't come out for a long, long time if that kind of information came to you at all at once. It would be equivalent to Esther getting the whole trip downloaded into her mind all at once. You don't want it like that. So you don't really even know where to start. That's what happened with our friend before. She didn't really know where to start. But your inner being knows where to start because your inner being knows what your resistances are and what the path of least resistance is. And so that's why we speak to you as we do in these gatherings because we know too. We know that the starting place is you're more than you know. The starting place is you're more than you know and the other part of you is aware of you and listening all the time. You're more than you know, and the larger part of you is aware of you and listening all the time. And the way you feel is your indication of the harmony or discord between those thoughts. We're starting at the very core basics of where you are. You see what we're getting at? And as you begin to accept that, this is why I feel the way I do, and that my inner being really is upstream for me and really does know what my path of least resistance is. And most of all, my inner being loves me and is rooting for me, not against me. My inner being is wanting to help me to become all that I have vibrationally already become because of the life that I've lived. So now you feel clearer. So of all the things in your life right now, we'll just ask you some questions for clarity. Which feels like what you'd like to talk with us right now? Which feels the most? You want to talk about how you could get more satisfaction from your job? Do you want to talk about how you could release that job and go to something more satisfying? Do you want to talk about how even though you're at a job and that's a part of your life, that there's another part of your life that you really enjoy, which is the remodel of your house? Do you want to talk about how to get that back on track? or something else. In other words, what do you want to talk about? Because there's so much in the vortex that we could spend a lot of words just with you about what's in the vortex, but what do you feel? What do you feel most curious to talk about or most interested to talk about? What interests you the most? What is the next direction to go in my job, in my career? Now hear this, just stay with us. So your inner being isn't going to tell you, even if you're tuned in, what the next direction is, your inner being is going to tell you what this direction is. Hear this. Because your inner being knows that you can't go to a job that you really love from a job that you really hate. So the next direction to go to where you really want to go is to settle in in more satisfaction with where you are. Ooh. Now that feels counterintuitive to a human mind because a human mind says, Abraham, I told you, I don't want to stay here. Why would I do positive aspects about here? Why would I try to line up with right here? Because you can't get to where you want to be from dissatisfaction. You've got to find satisfaction where you are, which will lead you to the next and the next and the next. You hear it? Yes. Most important thing we've ever said to anyone ever. 
So now your question has modified a little bit, hasn't it? But if you were already of the mindset that you just feel and listen, and the impulse that came to you during meditation was to make a list of positive aspects about your current work, and you were so tuned into your inner being that you were really on the same wavelength as your inner being, as Esther was, when she received the impulse to play with her music system. So that just seemed like the most exciting thing that you could do. So you get out your sketching pad and you draw a picture of the key people in your job. Who are they? Top three people that are the most significant in your job. The people that you interact with the most. I'm an acupuncturist. It's patience. So it's just you directly to the client? There's no hierarchy. There's no scheduling. There's nobody that you interact with? I'm all of that. You do it all? Yes. You do 100% of all of it? Yes. So? It's overwhelming sometimes. I do that because I know that I don't trust the flow of abundance into my life completely in order to be part of a larger organization or have other people working with me um, to accomplish that end. So I've worked myself into a hellish situation <laughs> because the alternative doesn't please me in this way, in this way, in this way. So it gets really messy and complicated, doesn't it? So what kind of download do you think you might receive from your inner being? What if you got a download that says, hire somebody to schedule for you? Would you run with that thought or would you resist it in protest? Well, I guess my have to start listening to things like that now. You know? What's your inclination? What's your inclination? My first thing is fear. That I'm, Am I going to have uh, enough for... All right, so if you're in meditation and that thought comes to you and you feel fear, you know you're not in alignment. So you know that's a receptive mode of something else. But what if maybe you've been meditating for two or three days for 15 or 20 minutes and you're in that place, you can't feel your nose from your foot, you know you're detached, and then a thought comes to you and the thought goes something like, someone to schedule for me. And it just feels like such a good idea that when you come out of meditation, you think, how do you go about finding a scheduler? And then you follow through with that. You see what we're getting at? Yeah, learning to be uh, receptive. Because it's really interesting, and what you've been witnessing here with two or three people that we've been talking to is that even when you receive direct answers, you can't hear them and you feel resistance coming up. So what we're getting at is you've got to get yourself into a place where you can hear.